I'm Jess Lewis. I'm going to take you through how to record multi tracked guitars. Um, we're going to show you how to get the best out of your equipment, no matter what equipment you've got. In this studio, uh, this is where uh, I do all my demoing. Um, but the same techniques apply to recording the demo guitars as they do when I actually record the album, uh, which is in a few other major studios. Uh, miking up a guitar cab is probably the most important part of multi-tracking a guitar. There's two different methods of, uh, of miking a cab up. Um, there's either this method, which is um, miking the top left speaker and the bottom right speaker, or there's also a way of miking up uh, the same speaker with two microphones. The reason why we use two microphones is because on each recording session we record two guitars at the same time and then we pan them hard left or hard right. In this session and in every other session I use um, I actually track eight guitars which gives you this big wall of guitar noise. This method is, is known as the best, it's, it's probably the, the best way of actually making a guitar cab up um, and all the major producers around the world use this, this, this way. The microphones that we usually use are SM57s, um, SM57 directional mics. These ones aren't directional so we just make do with these, again because it's a demo. Um, usually when I mic the cab up the microphone is in the centre of the cone um, it's usually a finger's thickness away from the mesh um, and if we were to use the microphones side by side which I'll show you now now we've now we've got this is this is the other method this is the other method of recording guitars you've got two microphones side by side the inner microphone is on the inside of the cone and the outer is just on the outside of the speaker and the reason for this is because there are actually two different sounds coming out from that one speaker. To make sure that they're actually in level the best way to check that out is to reverse phase the guitar sound. If, they, if you reverse phase it and the guitar sound disappears you know that they are equally balanced and that they're the same distance and width apart. So uh, I've used both methods microphone side by side microphones top left and bottom right. Great combination for guitar I'm using um, a Gibson Les Paul custom and we've got a Marshall JVM 410 cab uh, I turn it up pretty loud the best, the, the, often the best tones out of a cab is when they're pushed uh, not too hard obviously where they blow but uh, good enough to get that really crunching tone so uh, we'll now go in the uh, engineering room and uh, get some laid guitars down we're now in the uh, engineering production suite uh, with Ivy on Lloyd, who's my live guitarist and also um, a well-known producer in Bridgend. And uh, he engineers all the guitar layers for me um, on Cubase. Before um, we record the guitars, uh, I needed to lay down a drum beat. Um, we put in guide guitars, no act of parliament there, just a standard two-track recording and then I go into the live uh, part of the studio and play drums and then Ivion uh, just tidies it up you know uh, so that we can get it spot on um, and then we've got a drum beat then to play guitar too. I never stay in the same room as the uh, recorded guitar the reason for that is because um, when I do record uh, they're going to be coming out of one speaker uh, this is where you really hear the magic of layering guitars happening um, and the, the other reason as well is I just don't want to be picking up coughs or sneezes or strums or anything like that. So two separate rooms and I don't want to get deaf as well. So turning the cab up to its maximum is a, is a good move. Um, so yeah, so now we're going to record um, the first two tracks and they're going to be panned hard left. Are they going to be panned hard left? Yes, right? yeah. yeah. They're going to be panned hard left. I think, yeah, I believe it's going to be eight days before you yeah. come in.
now we, we've just laid the first two tracks hard left we've just selected a fresh uh, pair of tracks and they're going to be panned hard right we've recorded four tracks hard left hard right now we're going to go back to hard left and we're going to record track five and six. So we're up to six tracks of guitars now. We're up to the sixth track. Already you can start to hear the magic, that heavily produced uh, massive album sound of guitars. It's all down to panning, hard left, hard right. Um, so now we're going to put in the final two uh, tracks, this is seven and eight, um, and then we've got our eight tracks. The beauty about layering guitars like this um, is that you can also put uh, different tones on the top of it, harmonics, just to really make it sing. Now, what I'm going to do with this, because we've already got eight tracks of guitars, there's a lot of guitars, um, I'm now going to go on a few strings down, do a, a the similar, similar sort of riff, and it's going to be higher, and it will really make the guitar sing. I'm only going to record four tracks for this, because otherwise it's going to start sounding like chaos. So, um, so we're going to put down the first two tracks, uh, and away we go. <laughs> Basically, what we've done there, we've just added this, this tone, which is going in unison with, it's just adding different layers, different tones, um, so we're going to add another two tracks of that, and job done. So hard right now, is it? Yep, hard okay. right. Panned hard right, last tracks. How many tracks have we got? There? Eight, uh, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve tracks. On the twelve way. tracks of guitars. Eight tracks being a rhythm, and then the last four tracks just being a toner, just to give it a bit of variety. The first eight guitars are grouped into one channel, um, and then we'd uh, we just add a multiband compressor, tone it up a little bit. Just going to uh, control a bit of the bottom end um, and tighten it up a little bit. We're going to use Lear MB. You need to put the threshold in, um, and this this compressor gives you the, the kind of figures you need to be putting in there. So we'll play the track through. Type, uh, type in these figures down here into the, the main thresholds. We've just locked all those, uh, those threshold figures into the, into the compressor. Um, we're now going to change the, the makeup so it locks all these figures together. So you can, you can take the master threshold up and then all rise or, or lower down. What we'd, we're going to try and do is get this, this line here basically in the middle as much as we can of the blue line. Now we're going to 
try and rein in the bottom end a bit because if you, you see it's, uh, bouncing about there. it's bouncing about there all over the shop so we'll try with, with a bit of the attack and the release again because it's on we put the makeup to auto all these figures will change together The line is a bit, uh, it's, it's not jumping anymore, it's pretty solid. And basically now the last part of this process is just to adjust the, the gain on the, on the, the whole track, on the, the, the guitar tracks. That's, that's the master gain uh, channel of it. Um, when you're using compressors and whatnot, it's very easy, obviously, to, to go over the zero. Because um, it's all multiband compressed now, it's just literally a click of a button and it, it brings it back into under the zero. That track now is, is compressed to so all his guitar tracks, or his first eight guitar tracks, and we incorporate the whole track back in now. <laughs> Same principle applies if you're DIing the guitar. Direct input into uh, you know into the uh, audio interface. Um, it's all in the method of tracking. Um, as long as you as long as you pan things so that they're not in the same register, then uh, then you're not going to get any clatter in the recording. Um, if you're doing any triple picking like what I'm doing, uh, just to clean up the guitars, you can actually cut out where you actually stop playing the guitar. You cut the bits out so it sounds like a like a machine. We're gonna cut out blocks of where the guitar deadens, you know, just so that when it does kick back in, it is like precision, precision, precision. So we get quite aggressive with this method. We just get the scissors, cut it right down. No act of parliament with this. Just cut right the way down um, and cut it. Go to the other side of the guitar, cut that, and job done. I've selected all the tracks here. Um, all the, the first eight. Get aggressive with it, guys. Okay. Go on. That's, yeah, I'll do. No, 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 no. Where are you at? Yeah. The shortest point. <coughs> if you want the shortest. You want to go on the short? Yeah, shortest point. You want the longest. <coughs> um, so we now we're just going to delete in between now. All of this gets done in all my tracks. Um, really takes out a lot of noise and uh, really tightens things up. You know, when you've got your drums tightened up on grid, everything's to the click. Obviously, you've got to be pretty sharp on guitar to do this. This layering, um, but cutting out the noisy bits in, the, in between is the best thing. I love it. Uh, but it, it does get done with vocals. Uh, 
you know, the thing is with, with drums, there's, there's several different ways of being able to record drums. Um, but, uh, you know, you can either just re mic up the whole kit, play it, and you get spill of everything, which is the usual way. Or there's another method, which is totally break it down. So I just mic up the kick and snare. Then I go in afterwards and actually put in all, all the overheads so there's no spill. It's methods like that, but it's all layering. The, the idea, the beauty of this um, sort of method of recording is layering, keeping things clean and, uh, and cutting out all the crap, basically. The, the difference this does to guitar sound is amazing. <laughs> What you usually do then, you like crossfade it. You, you crossfade the, the the splits so that you haven't got the click of the of the cut. Um, and once you've done that, you've got one hell of a tight sounding guitar. Let's see what that sounds like. Let's see. We've just put a very slight fade on the start and the end of the cut. We've cut through the wave quite aggressively, so obviously there'll be a remnant, I mean, which will, in digital wise, will come out as a click. So you just take the, the, the little fade on the, the start and the end, it takes it all away. So here we go. There's your lessons of how to produce, edit, and cut and layer guitars. Um, you haven't got to have a lot of money to do this method. It's all in the technique, and I hope this technique helps you. So, rock on. <laughs>